Hello folks, welcome back. I have uh, cleaned up the movement plates here, did some polishing on that. Those came out pretty well. It's challenging to get in some of the, the fixed places here, and so it isn't perfect, but I think I invested the right amount of time in that, and that looks pretty good. I have also polished the pivots, and uh, that ensures that the clock runs efficiently and isn't going to wear itself out too fast. Now what I want to do is treat this like any other conventional non-electric clock and put the running train back in place and we're going to check for wear and see if we need to do any bushings. Uh, if you remember earlier I was suspicious that there is some wear and that we might need to give that some attention so we're going to take a look at that now. I have remounted the movement pillars and I have put in the three main gear train wheels. Um, this is kind of nice that there's so little going on at this level. The reason that a typical clock has so many gears is the extreme amount of gear reduction needed to get a spring that maybe winds seven full circles to run for a week. Well, this clock doesn't run for a week. This clock runs for about half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And so there's a lot less gear reduction needed. And what that means is just fewer gears. So that's, we're going we're gonna to enjoy that part of working on this clock. Sometimes getting everything back together in a mechanical clock is challenging. So I want to just evaluate this clock for wear and decide what needs to happen next. I have left out the verge because that prevents the gear train from running freely. And so I'm going to just manually let this run here and see how does it do. Um, it's, it's a little sticky. I may have something that's slightly bent that I need to investigate. Um, when you lacquer something, and I did lacquer these plates, the lacquer gets inside the holes and that actually shrinks them a little bit. So I, I need to go take a look at that. But while I'm in here, I want to show you what I think is some wear that needs attention. So this is the front of the movement. And the center wheel here, you can see if I, if I hold it from turning, there's quite a bit of movement there, and that's that's really too much. So I think that requires a bushing. The escape wheel is not quite as bad, but there's there's some movement there too. I think I'll probably bush the center one and then see how things go. On the back side, it's kind of the same story. If I hold the gear train, you can see that there's some movement both on this um, lower pivot and in the center one and then on the escape wheel at the top you can see the uh, the slop there so i'm going to go ahead and bush the plates and we'll come back and see how it's running after that so what is bushing a clock bushing a clock is a means of taking the wear out of a system like this and the way that we do that essentially is we use a special cutter called a reamer which produces a very exact hole size to make the hole of a pivot larger than it originally was. And then we insert one of these little bushings, which is just a metal donut that has a center hole that's the size of the shaft. So we make the hole larger in the plate, we insert one of these bushings, and then we can um, put one in with a, a hole that's the right size for the shaft and remove the wear of the clock. This is relatively straightforward. I have a large assortment of bushings here, and they come in different plate thicknesses, different outside diameters, and different inside diameters. And so our first order of business is to figure out what kind of bushings we need. So I'm going to measure the thickness of the clock plate with my caliper. Bushings are generally done in, uh, in terms of millimeters. And so this is a two millimeter plate. Bushings come in thicknesses of 1.4 millimeters, 1.9 millimeters, 2.7 millimeters, and 3.5 millimeters. So we're going to pick the next smallest size, which is 1.9 millimeters. By the way, all of this stuff is purchasable from uh, any of the clock supply houses, time savers, merits. There are two systems. There's the KWM system, which is what I use typically, and then there's the Bergian system, and they're both fine. There's some uh, minor pros and cons, and if you get too far into it, you probably will need both systems anyway because you'll end up working on clocks that somebody else has worked on that might be the opposite system of what you use. 
But anyway, um, I have over the years collected the parts that I need here. These are 1.9 millimeter height, and you can see this set comes in a range of an inner hole from 1.0 millimeters to 1.9 millimeters. So when we select a bushing, what we need to do is measure what we need. So if we look at our escape wheel, I can use a caliper to measure this. And I gotta figure out where it actually rides because if you can see, there's actually several different thicknesses of this shaft. And this one here is the one that actually rides in the plate. So if I put this in my caliper in the right spot, I can see that this is approximately a little over 2.0 millimeter hole. Um, and there does need to be some slop here, but this is awkward. So this is a very nice, unfortunately it's expensive, but this is a very nice accessory that is a bushing gauge. And it's just very simply a metal plate that is filled with bushings of the sizes that are mentioned here. So I'm going to take my escape wheel and I'm going to find the hole that it fits in. And there we go, we see 2.1 millimeters is the right inside diameter. Now I don't wanna to be too loose, so uh, there's several different ways of deciding how large a hole you should have. Uh, I like kind of the five degree method. So if you think about this, in terms of a protractor, wiggling this back and forth about five degrees off of vertical seems to be about the right amount of play. So I'm going to look for a bushing that is 2.1 millimeters inside, and then that will uh, determine what size hole I need to cut in my plate. This is my expanded set where I see that the bore is 2.1 millimeters. That requires a 3.5 millimeter reamer, and I will take that in, enlarge this hole, and we'll punch the bushing in. This is my typical bushing setup. I have a milling machine that has the reamer mounted in the chuck. Depending upon the plate shape, I would use my vise to hold it. You use something called a parallel, which is a set of uh, metal plates that hold your work off the bottom of the vise. In our case, we have this a-shaped um, movement plate, and there's just not a great way to grab it with the gear that I have. There are some various machines that uh, grab the plates in um, various ways that grab any size plate. I don't happen to have one of those, and so uh, what we're going to do is just use the, uh, the vise to hold it nice and level, and we're going to let the existing hole determine where the bushing needs to be here. Um, this is not best practice. Uh, it's ideal to lock this in place so that you can move the hole where it wants to go and counteract some of the wear. Um, I think in this case, I'm going to get away with it just because of the nature of how this clock is worn. So we'll go plunge in here. Here's our bored out hole. I'm going to grab the corresponding bushing, my 2.1 millimeter. These bushings have a little feature on one side that's called the oil sink. You can see it's kind of chamfered there and it's also um, beveled on the outside. And that is for inserting this. Normally you would insert the bushing from the back when, when you're able to do that and then I'm going to put this beveled side, this, this side here, down. Try to get that close. And then I'm going to use my punch to level this. And then I'm gonna use a small hammer and I'm gonna tap it in. You can see it's starting to go in. I want this obviously to be flush. And there we go, there's our flush bushing. If I've chosen the right height of bushing, this should be slightly recessed, and then you can see 
this uh, beveled edge on the inside of the oil sink where oil uh, kind of pools and then that keeps the pivot nice and lubricated. So that's basically the process. I'm going to use a reamer to uh, chamfer the back of this hole a little bit because brass gets smushed around when you pound on it. And then I'm going to um, insert our shaft here and see if this is where I want it to be. If it's too tight still, I can use a brooch, cutting brooch, to enlarge the hole slightly. This actually looks probably in the range. I can tip it a little bit in all directions, but there isn't really any room for it to slide. So this is probably pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna repeat that process for these other holes that are worn, this, this one on the um, front plate, and then all three on the back plate. I have completed bushing the shafts. I ended up doing five out of the six. This front one seemed okay, but I did all three of these on the back and then both of these on the front. And I also ended up bushing for the verge on both sides. That was pretty loose too. So I'm pretty happy with how this is now moving. If I just give a little bit of pressure, it'll run for a nice long time before it stops. Um, I did have to fine tune it a little bit to get it to this level. And so you put a bushing in that you think is close. And if it's a little tight, you start with one of these cutting brooches. This is a square uh, reamer thing. And then after you get it to the right size, you go back in, it, uh, in and out with this, which is a smoothing brooch. It's got little tiny ridges on here that flatten out the brass surface. So it took me a couple tries to be happy with how it works, but now just a little light touch makes the gear train spin very nicely. So now it's time to put more pieces back together and we'll see how it comes together. Well, I've done a chunk of the reassembly now. I have reattached some of these insulated contacts and this is, a, this is essentially a terminal strip that uh, a wire external to the clock movement attaches to a terminal to the solenoid. Um, was very careful to make sure that all the insulated items are actually still insulating. So um, that way this isn't going to make contact where it shouldn't. There is one place where the clock frame is used as a conductor. And that is the iron bracket in the back of the clock has a wire that runs to it, which um, connects with the four main mounting pins to the frame. And then this little contact uh, wipes onto the escape wheel to provide an electric uh, connection to the escape wheel. So to ensure that this is gonna work, I lacquered these plates, which is great for longevity of the brass, but it's bad for electrical conductivity. I took a very, very small wire brush and I uh, just brushed through the, the lacquer here so that when this contact is attached, it's gonna get good electrical conductivity to there. So I think I've got most of the pieces done between the plates. I'm going to reattach this contact and put the wheels in, and then we'll see what it takes to adjust this so all the contacts are where they need to be. Well, I put everything in between the plates. I discovered I had mounted the solenoid coils upside down. This was because of the upside down numbers here, 33, but the wires weren't long enough in the original orientation, so I flipped that over. Um, other than that, I think we're in pretty good shape. I've got good mechanical action in the clock. If I wind it manually a little bit here, um, you can see that it wants to run. The escape wheel is advancing itself. Uh, I think my verge looks pretty good after being bushed. I think I have all of the insulators where they need to be and all of the conductors where they need to be. So uh, just a couple other things to point out. What we don't really know yet is where these contacts need to be. These are, are still kind of loose at the moment. And then we need to figure out where these contacts need to be. But until I have the pendulum attached, that's going to be challenging to figure out. So I think I'm ready to lubricate this and stick it back in the clock. And then we'll, we'll adjust all of the things that may need adjusting here. But I think we're really close, and what's always a good sign is I believe I have the right number of pieces left over. I think all of this stuff goes on the outside of the plates. So I think we're in pretty good shape.